Hello, everyone. <coughs> Paddy and Mick were the very best of buddies. Paddy was an ardent churchgoer. Well, why wouldn't he with a name like Paddy? But Mick wasn't all that gospel greedy. Now, when Mick passed away, the family laid him out in his swankiest suit, stylish collar and tie, and the shiniest of shoes. He was a sight to behold. Now, when Paddy saw him in the mortuary, he muttered under his breath, Ah, poor old Mick, all dressed up and nowhere to go. I hope you enjoyed that. It's an Irish joke. Maybe you didn't get it immediately. One thing which our Catholic faith does is to give us a reason to live good religious lives in this present world, as the second reading says. <coughs> If our belief in the Catholic religion is wearing thin, we may be struggling to make sense of a host of faith-related issues. I know people these days feel more at home with the word spiritual, but spiritual <clears throat> could mean anything, even worshipping threes, or all this new age stuff, whereas religious has much more resonance attached to it. I noticed on December the 21st this year about 5,000 people gathered at Stonehenge to witness the sunrise. They were sort of worshipping the rising sun, which is a throwback to pagan times. But when believers celebrate the Feast of the Resurrection of Christ, a mega feast in the Christian calendar, most of the Stonehenge people are nowhere to be seen. They're probably tucked up in their beds, dreaming about the rising sun. At Easter, we worship a real living person come back from the dead and present to us at this and every Mass. The people of Stonehenge are making a god out of the rising sun peering through a cluster of oversized stones. Well, what's going on here? I don't think having no religious faith is as cool as it used to be. Why deprive ourselves spiritually? We wouldn't deprive ourselves materially, or mentally even. At our baptism, we apply all the power of Christ's death and resurrection to our souls. But when parents delay baptism for their children, until they are old enough to decide for themselves, are they not depriving them of the merits of Christ's death and resurrection, which is power over sin, resisting the devil and his temptations, and securing a place for us in eternal life, a place which the good Lord promised to reserve for us? What more could Christ have done for us? Why deprive children, or ourselves for that matter, of these merits? St. Paul in the second reading today advises us to give up, give up everything which does not lead to God, all our worldly desires, and have no ambition except to do good. John the Baptist is a good example of this. The sole purpose of his life and ministry was pointing the way towards Christ, the source of all goodness. He never took his eyes off the goal. He said, The person coming after me is more important than I am, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. He must increase, I must decrease. John ended up in prison, and he gave his life for Christ. All his energies were directed towards preparing the way for Jesus. Perhaps we could take a leaf out of his book. Today, let us thank God for the unmerited grace of our baptism and entrust our lives and destinies solely into his hands. He must increase. We must decrease. Thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all. <laughs>